Hey y'all, Andrew here with Free Tours by Foot New Orleans. It is springtime here, that time of the year when hope begins to grow like a plant in the crack of a sidewalk. That's not a completely improvised metaphor, just spotted one here. Hello, little snapdragon. So, given that and given that it might not be quite be spring where you are, I want to share with you today a walk through one of the most flowery spaces in New Orleans, which is City Park, particularly the Botanical Garden in City Park. Hopefully, if you're somewhere where things are still colder and a little bit more dire, we'll ease it up for you a little bit. So. It's going to be an immersive walk with high quality video and high quality sound. So this is a great one for your headphones. I'll throw in a little bit of commentary on the way and I'm a bit of a plant nerd. So I'll be naming a few things. Not too many, I promise. But if you're thinking about what to grow for the year, hopefully there'll be a little bit of inspiration there. If y'all want to support the channel, you'll find our tip links down below. Like and subscribe and all that. Here we go. We begin y'all with a floral spot right behind the New Orleans Museum of Art. This is one of quite a few sculptures we'll see by a man named Enrique Alferez. He's responsible for a lot of the art in the park, the outdoor stuff anyway. And falling water is the theme. It's a rainy day, but I think it adds to the, the picture out here a lot of the time and means we got a lot of space to ourselves. Dry right now. That over there is part of the Besthoff Sculpture Garden. And right there, you can see the New Orleans Museum of Art. So the entrance to the park is right on the other side of that. And this is part of the Sculpture Garden too. The Botanical Garden is down to our right. Walking the train tracks. Cutest little bridge in town. But that is not the way we're going, so I'm not gonna walk it can get a peek into the sculpture garden. We spend a lot of time in here during our city park video, so if you'd like to see more of it, you got that one, and maybe we'll pay it another visit soon. It's, uh, it's a little less floral. The flowers might distract from the sculptures, but still really beautiful landscaping and worth it any time of the year. I mean, here you go. Fixtures of just about any natural space that we put a human hand in. These are southern live oaks. We'll see plenty of them. And uh, right now, the season has them kind of bright yellowish green. That's partly because it's spring and they're replacing their leaves, and it's partly because they are covered in pollen. And they've also got this stuff, which is resurrection fern. And y'all are seeing it at its happiest. This stuff dries up, given too much time away from the rain. And then after a nice soaking, it springs back to life. So it looks dead one minute and then, maybe not quite a minute, but one hour and then fully back to life the next. Resurrection fern, you get it. That is the pavilion of the two sisters right across the way. We will see that from the inside of the park shortly. One more glimpse through to the sculpture garden some azaleas, more of those in store. And they have a little landscaped corner space over here before we get in. That is a whole bunch of what the LSU, Louisiana State University Ag Center calls Louisiana super plants. So it's putting a lot of things that grow well in the region on display. This ground cover with the little yellow flowers is sedum, which there are tons of kinds of, but this is a particularly well-suited one to the area like a little, little succulent. Lots of things that butterflies like through here, and also some dramatic pruning. We are down for y'all to see our gardens in whatever shape they're in. We're not ashamed. We're real like that. But the highlight, the botanical garden, is just a little ways down. It's actually all along 
the other side of the fence to our right. And getting in here, y'all, is 10 bucks typically, and so worth it. Um, there's a lot to see, which we'll see much but not all of, and there's a lot to learn through various events that are held there, and they'll do live music events there sometimes, which during the times of year when it's pleasant to be outside, that's pretty tough to beat. Good way to, to meet a bit of a local crowd, too, actually. Just to patronize one of these things that is largely a locals event. So, the entrance is just down the way. We'll be in there in just a second. And here we are. This part of the country y'all might know for azaleas and live oaks. And it's been really rainy the last few days, so the azaleas have been a little bit pummeled, but there's lots of other color in right now. Got a solid daffodil, snapdragon, etc. assortment going on here. And they are full of good advice at this place. Vertical planting is a pretty good idea where we are where space can be dear sometimes, but you'd never know it out here. Speaking of things being in bloom, Wisteria Arch, still very much underway, but off to a great start. Haven't seen many of these guys this year. So this is the kitchen garden, and this part of it is pretty sparse right now, but it gets real serious over here. Got citrus trees, I think this is a lemon, yeah. Got a guava, and then lots of stuff that would have a place in I mean, kitchen's all over the place. I think y'all probably wouldn't say no to some of these things. We got some rainbow chard. We got some cilantro. I need to pull those flowers off. Got some climbing beans, peas. Lots of stuff in its infancy. Oh, nice. And blueberry bushes. Yeah, I have a few of these in my front yard, a little, little front yard. And these ones are just, huh, got all the flowers and then the berries at their very beginnings. So long way to go on these yet, but it's a joy this time of the year watching them slowly mature. Yeah. No borage. A little less of a kitchen plant, but uh, those pretty blue flowers, they taste kind of like cucumbers. Throw one of those in a Pimm's cup and you get a bit of color with some complimentary flavor. And the bees love them. Climbing roses. Ooh, speaking of flowers you can put in a cocktail nasturtiums. This stuff is great. People grow this without knowing you can eat it a lot of the time. The leaves and the flowers both, and they're kind of spicy. So throw one of those bright orange or yellow or red flowers in a Bloody Mary. You're welcome. Also, if you're looking for something to grow and you haven't been a big grower in the past, nasturtiums can't kill them. So this is the uh, demonstration kitchen, and they do all kinds of like, cooking demonstrations and stuff with local chefs out here. So the culinary insight here is not to be beat, and if you ever pay this place a visit, I mean, it's worthwhile on its own, but that could certainly up the value. So always worth looking in advance to know whether anything's going on. This is the, uh, the desert plants portion. Very hard to see. It's 
So that's a big piece of what makes this place special. You know, botanical gardens everywhere, but that one's got a real local spin to it. And then this guy, our train garden, is the work of some local model rail enthusiasts who have, I won't say replicated the city in miniature because it has nothing to do with New Orleans' layout, but they have uh, replicated lots of business or buildings in miniature. If you know the French Quarter, you might recognize Cornstalk Fence and Madame John's Legacy. This is their French Quarter section. There is uh, an interpretation of St. Louis Cathedral. And they do it all with miniature plants. Garden District. And once in a while, not sure off the top of my head on what schedule, they actually have cars running along these tracks that come and go from over here. And when I say train enthusiasts, y'all, I mean train enthusiasts. I don't know any of these people personally, but that's probably because they're too busy with their model trains to meet me. Got some columbines. Got this part representing Milnberg, one of these uh, kind of early, as you call it a suburb, out near Lake Pontchartrain. And they have a plaque, pretty much unreadable, uh, dedicated to Smoky Mary, which was the first train in this part of the country. And it ran from the edge of the French Quarter down to Lake Pontchartrain, or out to Lake Pontchartrain. And their description of it really emphasizes the, uh, the not very impressiveness of the cutting edge technology of the time. Smokey Mary was aptly named. She belched a whole lot of black stuff and left you covered in it. Made a ton of noise. Left you choking and coughing. And all that just to achieve a speed of 10 miles an hour. What have we here? Bamboo, stacked rocks, infer what you will. Yeah. So this is our Japanese garden. And the Louisiana Japan connection is a multifaceted one. Oh, this stuff isn't quite all the way there yet. These Japanese maples coming into their leafing time. In another video we're going to drop pretty soon, we'll talk about Japanese landscaping in Louisiana via a small town up the river. But they have a quotation on a plaque here about the aesthetics of a Japanese garden, and it's a quotation from a man named Lafcadio Hearn, a very not Japanese name. He was a Greek-Irish guy, found his way to the U.S. and eventually to New Orleans and then eventually to Japan. And he wrote a lot, uh, a newspaper guy turned just general writer, and he really came to be the, the voice of some early outsiderly understanding of both New Orleans and Japan. And he got made into a samurai in Japan, actually. So, Lafcadio Hearn, super interesting dude. Here we go. Flower territory. Love these guys. This is a yesterday, today, and tomorrow. These flowers bloom purple, and they gradually pale out to white over the course of a few days.
This is their medicine garden. Those sounds are some medicine. What are these poppies? I'm not sure what these are. They're poppies, well, medicine. Classic aloe vera. And this one is an aromatic garden, so everything here, chosen for its smells. I can't give y'all everything on camera. You gotta actually come here and get it for that experience. The wind chimes are fighting all different kinds of mint, various times. The sign says frost proof gardenia. I don't see a gardenia, so I guess it was vulnerable to something other than frost. Some more nasturtiums for you. Some more columbine. Some more citrus. And check that out, a bird nest. Don't know if you can see that. We got us some native coral honeysuckle here. I love these hedges. Looks like you could skateboard on them. This is a bottle brush. Get it? Here we have Conservatory of the Two Sisters. If you know New Orleans, you might have heard of the Court of Two Sisters, a restaurant in the French Quarter, and you might wonder if they're related. To that I will say, apart from one, two is the most common number of sisters, so no connection. Tropical rainforest garden here. side they've got a living fossils exhibit. <laughs> Gift of Chevron. Fossil fuels. There's a connection, I guess. The notion of living fossils is these are all plants that resemble what you'd have had back in the dino days. Things that evolution hasn't taken too far from their bygone appearances. Some very familiar, some less so. Lots of plaques to read, y'all. Again, you gotta come in person to get all that. Hmm. 
I see some rain. Water lilies and rain. Perfect combination. We'll head that way a little later. Smattering of tulips. Butterfly garden over here, that's not to be missed. Hmm. Stirred up a monarch. is not going to let us or the rain tell it it can't have its milkweed. You'll probably hear me messing with the umbrella. Hopefully the rain is a more soothing sound than that. This part, Southern Shade Garden. And when we say Southern, we're emphasizing live oaks. Here's one of those Enrique Alferez statues. Many more to come. You can put swings solidly in the Southern category too. What does this swing offer a view of? The most afflicted looking live oak tree and somebody's abandoned vape pen. what these things are called. These are staghorns. Air plants. Mounted on a plaque and doing just fine. The section to the right is more tropical stuff. Not in great shape right now because we've had a late freeze this year. So another thing you'll have to visit in person for. Uh, we're in amongst the roses now. Oh, and got a whole little cluster of Louisiana irises over here. These are actually coming into bloom right now. You see a little dollop of color there. And then some that have already made their way out. This is a little early in the year for them. Oh, nice. Just emerging. Irises are to a lot of us what roses are to people in some other parts of the world. Louisiana is not the most colorful place in terms of native flora, but Louisiana irises, lots of different colors and shapes. And crossbreeding them and coming up with new varieties is uh, every bit as consuming a passion for some people in Louisiana as the rose world is. 
for some folks. Our roses too, they, uh, they come mature at all different times, but got some of them looking healthy, climbing roses. Bouquet d'eau. you. Huh. Y'all in a rose garden. Every day there's one rose that's perfect. We found the one. Another as yet not completely covered arch. Room to grow in our botanical garden. We like to show y'all works in progress. That's how real we are. Oop. Plenty of roses here. Looks like there's work underway in this one. I'll give them their space. Now well, back there. Behind everything, that taller one with the dark leaves, that is a southern magnolia, the bearer of our state flower. That'll be coming along in the summer. And here we reach the azalea garden with a lot of camellias too, although most of them are past their time by now. Like I said, azaleas, normally this would be a pretty good time for them, but uh, the rain we've had the last few days has closed them for business a little bit early. Still get some nice bright color out of them, as long as you don't look too close. And some of them have lots of flower buds, so we'll still get another, another week or so out of them. More early irises. few lingering camellias. A nice shade of brown. Here we have the pavilion of the two sisters from the inside. Stand out for now. These bunchy white flowers are grancy gray beards. Sadly underutilized little stage back here. Oh, nice. So this is flanked on both sides by a bald cypress. There's one, and there's one. And the first one is a lot more bald than the second one right now. They're called that because they shed their leaves in the fall and then regrow them in the spring, which is not what most cypresses do. So this one is a little bit behind the other one, but this one also shows you the, the thing that these are really known for. You see all these little pointy mabobs coming up out of the ground. Those are cypress knees, part of the thing's root system of mysterious purpose. Pavilion of Two Sisters is a wedding and event venue. Looks like we got something going on soon. Bumper crop of cars right outside the fence. Those are evergreen.
peekaboo. There's the umbrella. I definitely miss out on some things by not fully being here. Not getting your feet wet is one of the advantages. <laughs> Palmettos growing up inside of the tree. Brief pause for lens cleaning. All better. Got a chandelier hanging from this tree. One of quite a lot of lighting instruments that get hung here in December. This is our uh, Holiday Lights Central Maybe see all the way over there, flanking the entrance on that side, and then two more of them over here. We saw a bald cypress just a minute ago, a couple of them. These are weeping bald cypress. And if there was room for one in my yard, I'd be all over it. Here we are back by the conservatory of the two sisters. I might have called this pavilion earlier, but it is a conservatory. And I didn't say who these two sisters were, I just said who they weren't. Family of donors is the answer. Oh man, well, we got two perfect roses today. donors. That's how you get your name on the big glass dome. So this is the Enrique Alferes sculpture garden. Lots of the work of that man. Moses looking ready to break dance. And most of what you see out here is stuff that was, a lot of what you see out here at least, stuff that was installed in the park during the uh, WPA years here. So the Works Progress Administration did a ton of the work in the park. We get into a, a bit of that during our city park video. And A lot of what they built was infrastructure, so we have some really art deco bridges and benches and that kind of thing. Practical stuff. But, good supply of sculpture too. And we've accrued a lot of stuff that's not from the park originally, just Enrique Alferes' work more broadly. To put together the definitive exhibition of the man's work. And y'all can see the human body is his subject. And in general, there was a lot of, uh, I think it gets called exuberance for the human form in this era and style. Male and female alike. And it was very, uh, 
think of all the things we can do when we put our effort to it. If you were to visit here and come straight into the sculpture garden, or rather the, yeah, the Alfera sculpture garden, is what you'd see. We got that separate sculpture garden across the street. And then there's a wide open, unused area. So, what do you think the botanical garden should do with this? Email your suggestions to botanicalgarden at citypark. I'm kidding. Y'all have gotten quite a variety of the sounds that water can make. Here we are, back by where we started. So that's the basic loop. More to enjoy if you ever come here in person. Now step on outside. We are back outside, and here's the place from the exterior. It's also right next to uh, <laughs> another colorful destination called Storyland. This is a children's theme park. I came into the area to the sound of kids having fun, but I think we're past the hour now. Right across the way is the entrance to the Great Lawn. We have a lot of stuff that really comes into its own during the summer, and this thing is covered, or I guess later in the spring, more than the summer. This is covered in jasmine, which next month means this place will be intoxicatingly sweet-smelling. Whole garden district is covered in this stuff, too. And on the other side of the Great Lawn is Biometry, and it is where, if you've seen our city park video, it really is kind of the any time of year hub of beautiful nature. So while this year doesn't have it, this, this season doesn't have it looking that different, it's still worth paying a visit to. See through the trees over there, the peristyle. Just beyond that is the bayou. And over to the left of all that is Cafe Brumond. Not the original one. We're not in the French Quarter. And a playground. So, lots to do out here. So the weather today has it really quiet. If this is your first impression, I would not form lasting expectations based on this. This is full of people a lot of the time. I think, as I was passing by here, coming into the park, it looked like they had a little wedding going on. Folks are still gathered from that.
City Park is a, as you can imagine, pretty great wedding destination. I went to one in the Pavilion of Two Sisters once, and uh, officiated one in another part of the park. And the Paris style, you know, it's imposing. The solemnity of those thick columns, the timelessness of those ionic capitals, the uh, thickness of that giant wreath, <laughs> that is temporary. We have a Christmas lights display out here that I mentioned earlier, so that is what that is left over from. Normally they take that down. I think. It was a wedding side by side with people doing a yoga class. Some admirable shoulder stands. not impressed with the shoulder stands. A little pop of color here. We do have our share of roses. A bit less variety than what you get inside, but botanical garden is the place for connoisseurs. You can keep it simpler out here. those honks. Just about every kind of water bird has some variation on a honk that it makes. I've had a few different honks in conversation right now. You all see the turtles out there lined up on logs. Stray balloon from somebody's birthday. Flopping live oak. And here we have Cafe du Monde. This has only been a Cafe du Monde for, I want to say, a year and a half. Who has any sense of time anymore? Anyway, not long. There's a different coffee and beignet joint prior to that. Either way, I think the scenery is the selling point. Place to take photos, I know, right? Great day for it, too. Lots of space. That's what she said. That's what they say. This is a great day to take pictures. Yeah, low light does you some good for sure. Y'all hear that? 
this was good luck. And I wish you more of it. Oh god, what a terrible sound to end with. That's right. Hang up on your phone calls. That's going to be the spirit of today. Good night, Dan. Y'all, look down in the description below if you'd like to find a link to tip your guide, and please let us know what you think of these things. We're pretty new to doing them, so we'd love your input on where you'd like to see other ones done, New Orleans or otherwise. And if you liked what you saw of City Park and you'd like to learn more about it, our video in City Park can get you into more of the history of that space and lots, lots more things to see there. Help you plan a trip if you're going to get there in person at some point. Thanks for watching and see you next time. <laughs>